Uh, today we are going to begin with the fourth dimension of subjective adjustment that is personal integration. Till now uh, we saw the importance of selective awareness, tolerance and autonomy. Today we are going to talk about one of the most sought after uh, qualities of human beings that is how uh, you know, uh, well integrated the personality of an individual is, how uh, you know, uh, people search for consistency in the behavior of people whom they interact with. Personality uh, characteristics if they have coordination among themselves, this is considered to be an indicator of personal integration. So, your belief, your feeling, your action, the coordination between these elements are considered to be the indicators of the integration of an individual's personality. And therefore, it, it becomes rather uh, a stable form of behavior, okay, which gets manifested when an individual responds in a given type of a situation. So, whenever you find somebody uh, you know, responding in a particular way, you can very easily find out that there is a pattern that you can observe in that individual behavior, okay, if you look at the repetitive uh, formats. And that also gives you an idea about what this person feels about an issue, what this person believes about an issue. and all these things uh, you know, gets manifested in the action component too. If you look at uh, the extreme ends of uh, personal integration, there could be two possibilities. The first extreme end is that you become a very, very integrated individual. Your thoughts, beliefs, actions are very tightly synchronized, okay. but then it makes you a closed system, means there is uh, no that complete lack of permeability you are not open to any new idea, you are not able to accept any other action other than your own, you are not even uh, no open to a new form of belief that you have uh, not yourself experienced. And therefore, you show certain degree of rigid personality components, okay. this could be one extreme end of personal integration. The other end could be that you show great degree of diffusion and hence you show certain degree of disorganization of unstable personality components. So, at one end when you are so well integrated that you become a closed system, you do not allow any new idea, any new belief, any new thought, any new feeling to pour in. You never ever think of uh, know, revisiting your own uh, uh, components of personality. And then on the other end, you become uh, know, an extremely disorganized, diffuse type of a person and others will have great difficulty in terms of understanding what your ideas are, what you believe, what you feel, what you, uh, whether you will be uh, know, acting consistently over a period of time or not. But these are most sought after characteristics. No? After this, when we come to the third module, uh, it is a very small module, uh, within one lecture we will see the whole wide range of uh, human behavior right from uh, normal to subnormal to abnormal. And when we come to the fourth module, where we would be talking about uh, various components uh, that adds to the uh, adjustment process, there we would be uh, know talking about maintenance needs. Okay. Uh, at that time you would talk about no 10, 12 maintenance needs, but just to uh, tell you that one of the maintenance needs of human beings is the factor of predictability. We all want certain degree of predictability in our behavior. We also want that you should be able to predict the behavioral outcome of others, if not to complete extent, okay, at least to certain extent you should be able to do that. Okay. And that makes your life much more simpler. Okay. Why? Say for example, you come at uh, 8 o'clock in T201, you know that uh, no, again today we will have a lecture on uh, psychology of adjustment. You come with a particular mindset. No? This mental set allows you uh, to maximally you know, reject all other things that has nothing to do with this course. Okay. You sit here for 50 minutes and there is a greater degree of predictability. You know, I know that you have come here, so 
I should speak, you should listen to me, if you have a question you should ask, I should respond to you. These are predictable components. Imagine a situation when I do not know who are the people who would come today, means there is nothing like a registering in a particular course. Anybody can you know freely move into any course he or she wants to. Imagine a situation like that. No? Uh, when I do not know who are the students who would come today, who are the students who would come tomorrow, you do not know who are the instructors who are going to come today. Even if you make the instructors table, you do not know whether this instructor will take up a psychology of adjustment or will take up something else. Or think of more randomness in the situation when you do not know whether the instructor will come at all or not. Okay. Weird type of <coughs> thoughts. You also come here, I also come here, but none of us interact with each other. We only keep looking at each other, that is it. Okay. If you think of situations like that, you realize that no predictability is a wonderful component. Okay. Because I know, uh, know what I am supposed to perform in front of this group at this very time, you know what your role is and therefore, defining roles of uh, know all stakeholders become easier. Therefore, people will always look for you know, predictability component in the behavioral manifestation. Now, if you become extremely diffused, this would mean that others will have great difficulty understanding okay, what your intentions are, what your think thoughts are, what your feelings are. Okay. Right now, you express something else, one hour down the line you express something else. Okay. Or maybe every 5, 10 minutes you keep on changing your stand and people will very, very clearly tell you that you are not trustworthy or he or she is not very trustworthy. Okay. And this whole component of trustworthiness that uh, uh, no denominator has been assigned to you simply because you lack this ability of predictability. Okay. Hence, uh, there is always a beauty in terms of uh, no being permeable in terms of uh, being a open individual. Open means you are open to new ideas, you are open to the uh, feelings of others, you are open to the actions that are committed by others. Okay. That is perfectly okay, but if you uh, know become extremely diffused and therefore, your feeling, your thoughts, your actions okay, uh, has great degree of freedom of movement. Now, this degree of freedom does not allow them to get coordinated. And this will be a problem for the individual himself or herself as well as for others, because uh, people would not be able to predict anything about him or her. Similarly, you have extreme problem you know adjusting with people who tend to become extremely rigid in their uh, you know day to day interaction. Now, imagine a person who otherwise you know has a very clear uh, thought about something, his ideas are very clear, his feelings are well expressed his actions are you know completely non ambiguous, but then the person is not you know willing to listen to any other viewpoint except his or her own. Okay. And hence you show a great degree of uh, you know resistance in terms of coming out of the you know shell that you have created around you. Such people also have great degree of difficulty, because you know you when you interact with others in the environment, there are uh, you know, thousands and thousand types of uh, situations that you will come across. And therefore, if you uh, know, tend not to become permeable, you will have great degree of difficulty. Okay. Now, uh, say uh, take an example where gradually we have come to a point, I am sure when you were in your school days, uh, probably mobile phones were not so popular. Is it true? Okay. But by the time you came to a little uh, higher classes, mobile phones became you know, uh, a personalized asset. Okay. If you look at uh, know the whole history of uh, how uh, telephone sets got distributed in this country and the usage pattern of it, uh, know initially just like television sets okay, or refrigerators, telephone also happened to be a common asset in the family. So, you would have a centralized location maybe a drawing room or some other place where the handset would be kept. Okay. Those were the days of landline 
and it was a place of common utility for all the family members. So, if you receive a call, then it could be anybody who can come and pick the phone. Now, we have come to the point when your mobile phones are personalized assets, they are not common assets. So, if uh, you receive a call, even your parents can say, oh, it is a call for you, even they would not entertain the call. Okay. So, right from common assets in the family, we have come to a point where you have you know, highly personalized assets. Now, <coughs> think of a situation, say, I am sure when you gave your JE exams, you must have faced this. No? Parents giving you the mobile phone, telling you that no, uh, inform us if the moment you reach the center. Okay, after your uh, first paper, inform us how good was the paper. Okay, uh, after the second exam, before the second exam or second paper, also give me a call, or I'll give you a call. At the end of the second paper, give us a call. Okay, so then uh, then you have a well-defined, you know, a systematic uh, usage pattern that is prescribed to you by your parents. You visit the center and you are told mobile phones not allowed. Okay, irrespective of the fact that your ident uh, your admit cards and the instruction sheet clearly mentions that you should not bring uh, mobile phones to the examination center. Okay, thousands and thousands of students who appear in the exams they bring. I think hardly hardly you will find couple of students who come without mobile phones. Otherwise, the rest everybody comes with a mobile hand phone. Okay, now. The fact that you uh, are uh, no, uh, not showing that degree of acceptance to the norm, okay, uh, could be accepted by the other people who are managing the exams, or uh, people might you know show their uh, displeasure to it. Okay, I can tell you, for example, uh, most of us have been uh, know going as institute representatives, know uh, for these exams, okay. And uh, we do not take this as an offense. I do not know what would have happened to the first person who would have uh, know, received the first call uh, that can you, you know, manage this mobile uh, handset for me, because I have to appear in the exam. I do not know how he or she reacted, but now it has great degree of acceptance. People know that students will come with their uh, mobile handset and you have to uh, preserve them for a certain period of time and then deliver it back to them acceptance increases, but this acceptance has increased because you show flexibility in your approach. If what happens if the institute representatives of IIT says we are not bothered about your handset, I ha my duty is to simply conduct the exam. What happens if uh, the principals, the teachers of uh, the school where the exam is being held they refuse to you know, collect your uh, handsets, protect them and return it back to you. They simply say it is up to you, if you want keep it here outside the you know, main gate of the school. If you finally, come back and you can locate it fine, otherwise it is your loss. That could be a possibility, you know. when I just say that it is very clearly written in your instruction sheet, turn your admit card and it is written there. Why did you bring it? It is your headache, it is not my headache that would be becoming a closed system. You are very well integrated, no? you are following rules the way it is written, but then that creates a great degree of problem in terms of adjustment. What I am trying to say is that, the moment you do not allow yourself you know, that degree of flexibility that usually your environment demands, there will be a great problem for you. Uh, very recently, you know, couple of years back, uh, I am sure all of you received an email from the Dean of Academy of Affairs, saying that you should not bring your cell phones during your exams. Okay. There was a clear instruction that uh, you should not carry your mobile phones to your classes. Okay. And if at all you carry, you it should be put on a silent mode or it should be switched off. Now, tell me how many of you switch off your mobile phone? All you ensure is that uh, you know the moment a call comes while the class is going on, you will be hurriedly taking it out and uh, then disconnecting the call. But a momentary you know a digression from the given topic because of this sound has already taken place. Okay, I could take an offense and say that fine there was a mail uh, long back from the dean of academic affairs, so I'll report it to the disciplinary committee. You know. 
you are not complying to the rule. This could be one way of dealing it. The other way could be that you give this example so many times that the students gradually start keeping their uh, phones on a vibration mode. Okay. And if there are you no know, people who are really great stakeholders in this social system who do not uh, you know always attend to their phones, then uh, uh, how important is it for you to always you know or live with the phone, okay, where any call can come at any time, okay, as if you are running the world. No? But then you realize that more and more uh, no closed you become in terms of uh, no not allowing others uh, feeling thoughts and actions to be uh, no re-examined and you do not re-examine, you do not relook at your own behavior okay, from others context, then you tend to become a very, very rigid individual and many a times you have to pay a heavy price for that. I will give two different types of examples and then we will move ahead. I know of a man who decide, uh, who joined uh, uh, one of the surface transport system in our country, nationalized surface transport systems in our country and uh, he was very honest. Uh, he was, uh, I do not remember which section, but uh, related to financial handling, he was there either accounts or pension or audit. He was in one of those sections of uh, that uh, government agency and where he could see you know that uh, rest all were taking bribe for performing uh, their official responsibilities and he used to you know feel very bad about it. Instead of uh, no, allowing others to do whatever they are doing and allowing himself to do what he thinks do is good for him. What he started doing was that every time a client would come to him and because people thought that probably he will also charge him something. So, they used to give you know, along with file some advance amount you know, the way in certain offices you uh, perhaps know how it happens. So, they would keep certain amount right in the file itself and uh, pass it on to him. He will open it and shout at the client. Okay. And the content uh, you know, of that aggressive response to the client was, do you consider I am like him and he will take that name, do you consider I am like him and he will take that name. And those individuals used to feel offended, no? they used to say that fine if you do not want to take bribe, fine you do not take it, no? but why do you quote our name, okay, that client came to you not to us. You see your practice, but then the moment you, you know, refer to, to other uh, you know, stakeholders in your office, there is a mismatch and then people respond to you adversely. Okay. You will find uh, you know, many, many uh, um, you know, people like this around you, not many, but uh, at, in each sphere of life you will find somebody who is you know, uh, whom you can predict very easily. You know, that uh, uh, I know of uh, Prof, he is of uh, you know, great repute. But he had you know a fixed lifestyle you know, which is completely clock driven, 5 o'clock he will get up, 5.30 cup of tea, 5.45 walk and everything is you no know, uh, you know, timed sequentially. You cannot tamper it, you cannot tamper it. No? It goes up to you know when you say that uh, you know in this weather no, no walk but swimming in this weather, no walk, no swimming, but yoga, but everything is no very well laid out. Okay. If you uh, look at, uh, even if I look at the routine of uh, that person, no, I appreciate him, no? it is fantastic to uh, follow a routine, but think other way around. No? One day you got ready for the walk and suddenly you know, something happened, you could not manage and you are terribly upset, timetable got disturbed. Okay. I have seen that person sitting in meetings and saying, it is 5 o'clock, it is time for me to have tea with my wife, so I have to go out, finish. Okay. You do not say that, okay, I will postpone my tea, I will have it later in the evening or you say, you just call your wife that fine, I would not be able to come. 
you have your t there, I will have my t here or I would not have t at all, that could also be a possibility. Now, if you uh, know look at uh, know the routine, you say fantastic, you have made a routine, you are following it, okay. but the moment you start dogmatically following it, there is a great trouble. Okay. And similarly, when you move to the other extent, where people have great difficulty uh, know, uh, deciphering what exactly do you want. Okay. And you say, uh, you can do this also, even that is also possible, you can do this even. No? You give multiple uh, options to an individual and the individual gets confused. You are point blank asked, what do you want me to do? And you say, no, 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 you decide what you have to do, I am giving you options. Okay. Or today you take one stand, tomorrow, tomorrow you say that no, I am too open to ideas, the what we were discussing right now, that you are flexible, you are permeable, you allow other ideas to pour in. But the moment the other idea comes, your original idea sways away, no? you have now new idea, third thought, fourth thought. Okay. So, the stability of your uh, belief system, stability of your thought process, stability of your action, all are at stake when you go to the other extreme end. And hence, people consider you to be extremely disorganized, because you are not able to uh, know, sustain uh, that stability in your uh, certain psychological processes, which are considered to be uh, know, important determinants of integrated personality. And therefore, people will say that he is not trustworthy. Okay. People who are on the other end are usually considered to be the man of integrity. But the, if you tend to become man of integrity in the spirit of what is written in the text, great degree of problem in terms of adjustment. Okay. So, again in case of uh, personal integration also you realize that you have to get you know, uh, you know more and more closure to the median point rather than going towards the extreme ends. Okay. But if at all you move towards one of these extremes, perhaps that extreme end is still better than this extreme end. No? You must have uh, know, uh, read in the uh, newspapers, no? uh, many uh, political leaders or uh, many office bearers, uh, they were killed by uh, certain uh, terrorist organizations, okay, because uh, the terrorist knew that this is a person who maintains certain routine. I know for example, uh, in one of our neighboring countries, their uh, top military commander was killed in a uh, bomb attack on, on his car. No? Now, uh, that top brass officer used to follow a time no? and the terrorist you know, they started uh, looking at his routine and realized that this 9 o'clock and his car will now come out of this gate. Okay. 9 15 he will reach his office again this time in the evening this car will come out. So, they kept on kept on maintaining this to realize that for months there was not even a change of few minutes or few seconds. No? It would be hardly you know couple of here and there no uh, millisecond changes. Okay. They may he used to maintain his uh, know routine to this extent and this made him made the terrorist organization plant a bomb with precise timing no? and it exploded right when the car was on top of the bomb and the person finally, succumbed to this, his injuries. Okay. Now, becoming uh, know, uh, complying extremely to the routine, we took one example of uh, prof and we are taking now another example of a top brass officer in uh, one of the well uh, uniformed services in our neighboring country and you see what happens now. But it is better to still move on the other end, because then uh, you have uh, no a structured lifestyle, you have uh, no you are considered to be a man of integrity by uh, your uh, uh, involvement, the people in your uh, community and therefore, your overall uh, appreciation for your uh, personality, your behavior that increases. Now, we come to uh, another uh, important uh, dimension of subjective adjustment that is control over your behavior and your impulses. Okay. As you uh, know that psychology talks about behavior in all its form okay. and therefore, 
you uh, realize finally, that most of our behavior they are holistic in nature. There is a reason for you to respond in a particular way, okay, you get a stimulus from the environment, you decide what is appropriate and accordingly you respond back. Okay. You also you know, midway you can revisit your decision, okay, uh, whether this reaction is okay or not, whether there some type of a taming is needed, some type of a refinement is needed in the behavior okay. and then you accordingly you know fine tune the, your reaction. But overall your responses are wholesome in nature. Okay. Say for example, uh, two of you get engaged in some type of an argument. Okay. And you suddenly blast your uh, adversary, realizing that if you raise your voice, okay, irrespective of how weaker your argument is, perhaps you will uh, take him over. But in turn, you realize that the other person, uh, know, besides raising his voice, also shows certain aggressive action, which you think, oh, uh, I did not contemplate it. And therefore, you say, okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is a midway revision, this is what I was saying. No? Many a times we do that. Okay? You uh, interpret that this could be the consequence. If I do like this, you, th you think of the possible uh, options that you have at hand, and whichever you consider to be appropriate, you execute it. While execution, you revisit, you, know? you uh, appraise your own uh, response to the situation and how the situation in a, is responding back to you and based on that immediate feedback you decide whether to refine your response or not. But at the end of it, once the behavior gets terminated, you realize that this was a complete package. But many a times, we come forward with certain unreflective immediate responses. Okay. Responses which uh, know it was simply like say just a sudden spark. And you could not uh, know, control it. Such type of uh, know, uh, unreflective urges, okay, which makes you act, and you do not uh, know, uh, have a sense of control over it. They are defined as impulses. So, your ability, okay, to modify your behavior, to control your behavior, and also your ability to control your impulses these two are also considered to be important uh, denominators of subjective adjustment. Now, practically it is expected that human beings uh, should have a control over uh, their impulse, okay. but unfortunately this is theoretically correct. Practically almost all of us fail. Okay. Some people have uh, no, little strong control over their impulses and behavior some people have weak control and some people you realize that they have very hard time controlling their impulses. Okay. Uh, perhaps after the mid semester exam or so, we will come to uh, one of the module, uh, where we would be exclusively talking about aggression. And the last topic of aggressive behavior would be, what usually people consider not to be uh, an issue of clinical concern, okay. but technically uh, it is considered to be a disorder, it is called impulse control disorder. Okay. Usually what happens, anger in most of the society has a uh, no great degree of acceptance. So, say if I shout at my subordinate, it is by and large accepted. If I shout at my uh, no, uh, wife, my children, it is, it has greater degree of acceptance. Okay. If I uh, shout at strangers, it has some degree of acceptance. Okay. So, it is basically you realize that there is some degree of power equation and this power is derived out of many, many things. Okay. That uh, will determine whether your aggressive response will be accepted or not. But then, if you are the one who show, uh, no your incapability in terms of controlling your impulse. So, something happens and I suddenly blast. Okay. Is this the time to come to the class, you are 25 minutes late. 
I am not blasting this is just an example. Okay. There is a sudden blast and then you could see those changes and then I calm down. So, it is like say you explode and your explosion does not have a control. Interestingly, family members, people in the community they will start saying he is like this, no? he has been like this, even his father was like this. This is no greater degree of acceptance of behaviors like this, but technically such type of inability of uh, no uh, complete inability of uh, no uh, having a control over one's impulse is considered as impulse control disorder. We will not talk about it right now, because we are talking about impulse control therefore, I just thought of referring to it. When we come to aggressive behavior at that time we will end with impulse control disorder and we will also have the clinical criterias, okay, criteria 1, 2, 3, 4, what are the criterias on the basis of which you interpret that this behavior is not anger, but it is impulse control disorder, okay, but that we would do at that time. So, you realize that people have uh, no, uh, different uh, ways of expressing their uh, feelings. In terms of uh, no extreme ends, one possibility is that you have extreme construction on your behavior okay, and you repress your impulses, what repression is right now I will describe it. Okay. But this would mean that you are in complete control of your impulses, of your behavior. No? So, you are on the driving seat okay, and you hold the handle firmly, my dear behavior you cannot take a left or a right turn unless I allow you to do that. That is one extreme theoretical possibility. The other uh, extreme possibility is that your behavior is uninhibited, no? you cannot interfere, you cannot do anything. You have a tendency of compulsive overt expression of your impulse. Okay. You remember the ad, control kare to kaise, no? it is like that, no? you cannot control at all, no? it is just a reflex which immediately comes and you show a great degree of inability in terms of having a control over it. These could be two extreme forms of behavior. It is very hard to find people you know, who will show extreme construction of behavior, but you will find repression of impulse to be very common. Okay. But it is relatively easy to find people who have uh, no great degree of uh, no problem in terms of controlling their impulses. Many people you will find who have very, very uh, no, uh, intense problem of having such controls. Now, being both, okay, either you have complete control, so you say this, uh, no, the lights will remain all till I want them to be like that. I will stand till I want uh, no, myself to remain like this. I will not you know, blink my eyes till I do not feel doing that, complete construction of behavior would mean that. Okay. It is very difficult, okay. but then taming of behavior is possible. Okay. When I know the do's and the do not's, the moral code of conduct, when I know the I am aware of the reality, so my re awareness reality awareness, my uh, no clarity of do's and the do not's and then my own urges, no? what pleases me. If I am able to make a compatible arrangement between these three, which many of us are capable of doing in most of the situation, it is fantastic, you have maintained the balance, you have control over your behavior. Okay. Think of situation, no? uh, you are hungry. During lunch, uh, no, you go to your hall and say you have been uh, allotted a hall which is far off from the lecture hall complex. Okay. And you know that there is a hall just opposite to this uh, lecture hall complex gate, but it is not that because I am hungry, because I am a student, because I stay in a hall, therefore I will enter any hall that comes my way first. Okay. You decide to go to your own hall, not to any other hall. Okay. Uh, so, imagine situation, no, you are hungry and you see you know, that uh, no, there is a buffet arrangement of the food, okay. but you do not go and start eating there. No? 
you take a plate and stand in the queue, there are 30 people in front of you. Although you feel the pangs of hunger, you have no other choice but to stand in the queue. You know, fill your plate to the fullest possible extent, you know, the dome shaped, because you are too hungry. Okay, you go and sit in the moment you swallow the first bite, you realize the food, it completely distasteful. Although you are hungry, you compromise and you decide, nah, yeah, I won't have it. Quite possible. No? All of you must have experienced situations like this in life. Okay. Now, this is having control over behavior. First, I controlled my pangs of hunger. Second, I controlled the fact that although I am hungry and others are not, so still I am waiting in the queue. Okay. Next, I allowed myself the freedom to you know accumulate as much uh, food stuff as I can, given the you know defined uh, shape of the plate. And although I was hungry and I had the first bite, I decide now to remain hungry because I do not like the food. What do you consider it to be a control over your behavior? It is a control over your behavior. Okay, right now, we will come to repression also, but first we come to complete uh, no inhibition, uninhibited type of responses. Uninhibited type of response would mean, I am hungry now, okay, I see my clock irrespective of whatever is going on. I just go out, the first thing that I find anywhere that is worth eating, I start eating it. But imagine a situation, if you do like that, uh, how much people will uh, appreciate you or I do not know if they will appreciate you at all. Okay. There are uh, many, many, many such situations in life, in reality when you experience them and you realize that no, your behavior needs to be under control. You look at a girl who looks very pretty to you, you look at a boy who looks very handsome to you, okay. uh, but besides simply tagging that girl as beautiful or tagging that boy as handsome, you do not do anything else. Okay. Uh, somebody who comes and sits next to you in the class and uh, no, he stinks, but you do not say that fine. Sir, unless and until room freshener is applied to this to T201, I would not sit here. Okay. Please deregister this student, because he stinks, he does not take bath before he comes to the class, you never do that. You may not like uh, say for example, you may not like my appearance, no? you might not look, uh, I might not look appealing to you, okay. but the, for the full semester you have no other choice, but to constantly look at me for 50 minutes. These are uh, no examples that all of us are capable of having behavior control. Controlling behavior is not that difficult. The only thing is that for certain types of impulses, you need to have a much more stronger control. So, the distance between these two extreme uh, no possibilities, complete restriction and repression to complete uninhibited type of response. Okay. Now, they have varying degree of response that is possible. One, you repress your uh, behavior. Now, uh, second possibility that you suppress your behavior. Third, you freely uh, know, express your impulses. Are you aware of what suppression, repression is? Yes, no, no. <coughs> Expression you understand, no. So, you feel something within and you express it fully, that is the free expression of your impulse. If you are not very sure, okay, how uh, this expression of impulse would uh, know, what type of result it will fetch you, okay, but you are uh, know, uh, cautiously evaluating it and you decide that know, uh, the free expression of this impulse will not be good. So, you suppress your thoughts, you suppress your desire. Now, what happens in suppression is that you are aware of your thought and you are also aware of the fact that you have tried to conceal it. So, you take a box, you take your desire, put it in the box and lock it and you are aware that I have this desire, I have put it in the box, I have locked it and the key is with me you are aware of the full fact, but then you do not express it, you have contained it, that is suppression of that. This means, 
suppression psychologically speaking is a conscious process. I am aware of my desire, I am also aware of the fact that I am not going to express it. This is suppression. Repression would be that even if I become aware of a desire like that, it is very demeaning to me. Okay. It is demeaning to me and I will think that come on, how can I think even like this? Am I so stupid? Am I so bad? That type of feeling you might uh, derive. This means your, in uh, Freudian terms, your superego okay, does not allow you to even think stuffs like that. And therefore, what happens? The moment the desire is about to sprout, unconsciously you contain it. Because it is unconscious, so you never come to know your desire and you never ever come to know that you have contained it. You got the difference. Repression will act as a at an unconscious level, suppression will act as a, at a conscious level and free expression of course, is a free expression. So, you and the world can see it. That is the difference between suppression, repression and expression. <coughs> Clear? So, the possibility in terms of you know, uh, if you look at the full range, so two extreme ends and what happens in the at the intermediate steps, one extreme end you repress your behavior, slightly before that you can suppress your behavior, even before that you can go for a free expression. The other possibility is that behavior is held in abeyance. No? one day I will show him. You just think of it, but you do not show it. So, your behavior is planned, but you put it in abeyance, you do not express it. I will express it one day, you do not express it. That is putting behavior in abeyance and behavior appropriately controlled to suit time and place. So, I very precisely you know come forward with a tailor made response which is appropriate in the context in a given place at the time and then I accordingly execute it. Okay. So, from center point to one extreme is this possibility. Okay. The other possibility uh, know, would be uh, when you complete start going in a very, very weird fashion, more loose much more looser, completely lost, that would be the full range. Once again, you can realize that the more and more you are uh, know, uh, at the convergence of the two extreme ends where it uh, meets, that makes you much more uh, stable, okay, much more adjusted. And we now come to the last uh, know, determinant, the last dimension of subjective adjustment that is self-realization. Self-realization basically refers to the fulfillment of one's potential. What I am capable of, if I am able to achieve it, that is self-realization. Uh, given the individual limitation and the social situations, this process too becomes too intricate. No? Because you have your individual limitations, you also have certain social restrictions that are put in front of you. And therefore, you realize that conformity and compliance to socially prescribed forms of behavior Okay. If you exhibit that, if you comply to the social protocols, if you uh, conform to the social norms, you realize that you enjoy a great degree of social acceptability. Society is happy because society becomes more and more stable. Okay. But when you realize that uh, the very fact that uh, society demands you to do certain things in order to maintain uh, the stability of the system. If you realize that the demands are exploitative, it exploits you. Remember to study, we took the example you know, of a boy born in the family of a cobbler, okay, who is told that right from your uh, early days, you have to learn nothing but the skill of mending shoes. Okay. If that boy feels that this is my, this is exploitation, why I should do only this and why not other things? Okay. Then you need to go out of the what you the limits of the social acceptance. Now, you realize that the demands restricts realization of your potential. You are told that no, 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 girls from this family never go out to study. Okay. 
a sad fact of India, perhaps you know it, that for most of the boards in India, right from central to state boards, you will find that the toppers are mostly girls. But when it comes to you know, professional courses, after plus two, you realize that it is mostly boys who are there. So, where are those missing girls then? This means that there were few academically bright girl students, who were not given the privilege of continuing into uh, other courses, where boys who were initially lower than them in their academic performance got a chance to do, but that is the sad reality. Okay. And if you realize that the demand is guided by the social domination of some type, then adjustment would mean, which might not be socially and legally accepted at times. Okay, legally it will be accepted, socially you will have tough time, that you should try your level best to break the structure and come out of it. Okay. One should not succumb to uh, no such type of structural uh, no equations that are put uh, in front of you by certain uh, no social systems or uh, stakeholders in the society, that you have to comply to this only and your con compliance conformity adds to the social structure that is not uh, no, the way of life, because it inhibits uh, no, uh, you the opportunity of realizing what you are otherwise capable of. Okay. So, refusal to conform in such scenarios would be considered to be a sign of mental health, that I am mentally sound, which uh, no, might be that others are not, because they are still trying their best not to allow me to you know, realize the potential that I have in me. Okay. So, even though I am born in uh, you know, the family of a cobbler and for last three generations of the recorded history that I know is that my family is into mending shoes, I decide to be the world greatest open heart surgeon. I will also mend, but I will you know stitch the hearts of others, I do not become a cobbler, that could be a possibility. Now, in terms of action, you say, see, I also cut, you also cut, I also stitch, you also stitch. No? But one is, uh, no, one has uh, lower social recognition, because one is a cobbler, another has a very, very high social status, because one is a doctor. And doctor also of a very, very, uh, no, uh, what you call, um, <coughs> high uh, precision in terms of performance of the medical act. You become an open heart surgeon. So, all the society will start saying that no, no, you are breaking the barrier. Okay. Uh, one of the Nobel laureates in physics, when she uh, went to uh, the university in Europe, she was the only girl in her university at that time. Imagine you know, uh, the European society at that time. Okay. Even when we are uh, sitting here in the class, you have only two girls here out of 59 registered students. Okay. This makes you realize that you are in minority. Okay. Although, uh, okay, when it comes to uh, know, uh, succumbing to certain type of pressures, you say that no, we are equal. Okay. Even though I might be two or I might be only one, but I am uh, know, an independent entity in this class and therefore, the privilege that is given to rest of the 58 or 57 students comes to me also in the equal proportion. Okay. So, when you fight like this, demanding that no, this is uh, no due to me and you have to give it to me, although it is at the cost of maintaining social structure, psychologically it would be considered to be completely sane behavior, although socially it might not be appreciated. So, there is a difference now here. No? Now, in terms of uh, no, uh, extremes of behavior, one possibility is that you have complete realization of your potential would be you know, something like aham brahmasmi type of thing. No? I am the divine, I know what I am capable of, I can do right now, right now, that is you know, the one end of it. The other end is that you achieve minimum in your life in terms of what you are actually capable of. So, although you are capable of getting A plus according to the grading system, but you are happy a yeah, fine here, yeah. life may sometimes even F should also come to one's life. Your instructors, your friends, your family tells you, you are capable of getting A plus, come on. You try to get D and you say, come on, 
if uh, d is better than f, so I am happy with it. That is being you now satisfied with minimal achievement in one's life. Okay. Now, if you can go for complete realization of one's potentials, fantastic, nothing like that. Unlike others where we were saying that no, they try to converge, okay, come to the median point and that would be you know, an indicator of your uh, adjustment. Here, if you go for complete realization of potential, fantastic. Here, you can go to one complete end, okay, but uh, very few people would be able to attain that level. But then, do not come towards this extreme, no? do not move towards this side uh, of the continuum, where you are happy with uh, the minimum achievement that you get in your life. 